So you wanna buy a Nissan 350Z, also known as the most sought after car for drifting. And not only that, it's growing a huge fan base because of the Fast and Furious franchise, and it is seriously a game changer of a car. So let's say you guys already found the listing you guys are interested in. These are the key things you guys wanna make sure you're looking at before you end up buying the car. So the first thing you guys are gonna to wanna to look at immediately is under the hood. That is a no brainer with any car you guys are buying. You're gonna want them to pop the hood and you're gonna check for leaks. And also when you guys are going to look at the car, make sure you guys go as early as possible in the morning because that's gonna test for any sounds, squeaking, ticking, anything like that, because when the car is already warm, all of that tends to die down. When you guys get there as early as possible and you get the car cold started, that's when you're gonna be able to hear absolutely everything going on. So the first thing I would personally look at is gonna have to go to the radiator. Make sure you guys check on this mesh material all the way down the top of the radiator. Make sure there's no cracks, uh, no separation from the actual radiator and that mesh. And as you guys can see as well, you guys wanna make sure that your fan isn't loose. Mine is loose. Uh, all of the bolts actually broke and it's just being held on by the actual radiator uh, reservoir. And obviously you guys don't want your fan falling into your belt and then your belt getting all messed up and your belt grinding the reservoir. That's actually what ended up happening with mine. Uh, my reservoir, both the bolts on the top ended up breaking. It fell into the belt. It grinded the reservoir and I was leaking fluid all over the place. The next one's going to be a no-brainer. You guys are going to want to check the dipstick. Obviously this is a no-brainer. You guys are going to want to make sure you go as early as possible in the morning because that's when you're going to get the best and most accurate reading of the oil levels on any car. And obviously upon startup, if you guys hear any ticking, any hissing, or any squeaking, that is three signs right there that there is something that you guys are going to have to fix when you do buy the car. And this is why going early in the morning is going to save you. Unfortunately, I went at night, so the car was already warm when I got there, and the belt was squeaking the next day after I bought it in the morning like crazy. Uh, it turns out my belt was fraying completely. Uh, it was actually just on a thread. I had to take it to get it repaired immediately, uh, but I had no idea just because I didn't show up early enough to where the car was sitting and it would have been a cold start and I would have been able to hear that squeaking before I even made my purchase. The thing you guys obviously could do is get on the ground. I know this isn't ideal, but get on the ground, make sure you look under the car and see if there's any leaks whatsoever, especially after they start the car up and you guys go for that test drive. When they bring it back, have it sit in the driveway while you ask a few more questions and then ask if they can move it forward or just check under the car and see if any leaks happened after the after the car ended up warming up. Now, upon getting inside of the 350Z, I will say the interior is very weak and it tends to fall apart on you a lot. I don't know how picky you guys are with your guys' interior, but the center console and just the material that all of this is made of is, is honestly not very great. Uh, the vents, I don't even know how this ended up breaking. The door handles go out on you a lot if you, you know, yank on them really hard. And this gauge right here, uh, it usually if it's broken, it'll read 120 oil pressure. So high chances are if you do start the car uh, and this gauge is completely maxed out and even more, um, high chances are that that gauge is just bad. Mine is bad right now. Uh, that goes out a lot on 350Zs. So that's not something you need to be worried about. Obviously you're gonna have to change the sensor, but that's something that's not as important. But speaking of door handles, make sure they all work because the 350Zs seriously do. The door handles go out a lot on these things. Luckily mine has not given out on me yet. Both my door handles still work. So we are good to go on that. Oh. That door's locked. Okay, that got me scared for a second. But regardless, make sure you guys are checking the inside and the outside door handles on this car just because if one doesn't work, the other one probably does. If they both don't work, then that's obviously gonna give you problems getting in and out of the car. And if you guys have been enjoying the video so far, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. It lets me know to make more videos just like this and it helps me out a ton. So the next thing we're gonna be looking for is rust in the trunk. I know that's a weird spot for it, but trust me, it's there on most of them. And make sure you guys check that these hydraulics actually work because mine actually gave out and I have to hold up my trunk with two sticks every single time. They're only about 50 to 80 bucks to replace, so if those are bad, it's obviously not money breaking the bank to fix those. So when you guys do get into the trunk, you guys are gonna wanna make sure you guys check underneath where the spare tire would actually go. Down here, I don't have any rust problems, but rust usually tends to break through all the bottom of this. The entire bottom of this can rust out, so make sure you guys check and see if there's rust under here. Now that's everything you guys need to be looking for when you're actually physically in person waiting to buy the car, but there are some things that you guys need to know about the car mechanically, and obviously it's regular maintenance upkeep. The best part about these cars is the wide variety of aftermarket parts that you can actually throw on these things. Like, I mean, there are literally hundreds of sites you guys can go on to find either cosmetics, 
any modifications, aero, anything like that, you guys can get parts from absolutely anywhere. And they are also great cars on the track, whether you're drifting or literally tracking it to death. You can make these things however you guys want with as much power as you want without having any problems. However though, these cars are not that great for daily drivers. I daily drive this thing. I personally get 12.5 miles to the gallon. I know that is terrible. Corbin, how do you do it? Um, I just have to live with it because it's my daily driver, so there's not much else I can do. To sum everything up, if you guys wanna get the best Z possible, make sure it's low miles, preferably in HR, and the least amount of owners as possible, the better. That does bring this video to an end. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys did enjoy it, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video.